Hey everyone, welcome to Medication Monday. This is where we go over a different EMT drug that we administer out in the field. We do it specifically in EMT drug card format. As always, follow your local protocol and scope of practice. Enjoy. Today's medication is called digoxin. It falls under the class of inotropic agents and cardiac glycosides. The mechanism of action is that it inhibits the normal function of the sodium potassium pump and it increases the intensity or force of cardiac contractions and slows the impulses being conducted through the AV node. Your indications are going to be heart failure, atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter with rapid ventricular response, and re-entry SVT. I will say this is not a common medication that we see given on the ambulances, but it is a medication that you may end up seeing given in flight medicine or on long distance transports. As always, before we get into dosages, make sure you abide by your local protocol and stay within your scope of practice. The dose is going to be four to six micrograms per kilogram over five minutes. And the second and third boluses are two to three mics per kg at four to eight hour intervals. And pediatrics, it's just not recommended out in the EMS field. Your contraindications are going to be ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, digital digitalis toxicity, and hypersensitivity to digoxin. Some of the adverse reactions you could see with digoxin are green and yellow halos or visual disturbances, seizures, fatigue, headache, confusion, nausea and vomiting, dysrhythmias, and bradycardia. Drug interactions. Verapamil and amiodarone may increase digoxin levels and cause heart blocks. How it's supplied. It is supplied in 0.25 milligrams per milliliter. A few side notes about this medication and actually Actually, some of these count as drug interactions as well. Diuretics may potentiate cardiac toxicity, and also your patients with electrolyte imbalances are at a greater or higher risk of digitalis toxicity. Renal failure patients are also at a greater risk. But if you think about it, when a patient is on diuretics, that makes their electrolytes imbalanced. If a patient is in renal failure and maybe they haven't gotten dialysis or maybe they just got dialysis, that is also going to mess with their electrolytes. This medication requires constant cardiac monitoring in the EMS setting because of all the risks. As always, remember to abide by your local protocol and stay within your scope of practice. This video is purely informational for those in the EMS field and never meant to be used in the place of professional medical advice, local protocol, or formal education. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next Monday. Bye!